123 Giro d'Italia stage four, as you can see on the straight screen, a hilly old affair, couple, you know, sharp kicks towards the end of the, of the stage. And we join the action with 14 kilometers to go as Pidcock, uh, who's in the sort of Mania Ciclamino, I guess you'd say. It's not really that jersey, but I think it's the point jersey. And he's got his teammate on the front, drilling it. As I break up the road and Pidcock wants to win the stage, go into the leader's jersey. Sorry if there's a little bit of um, issues with the footage. Um, it is what it is. We try our best. Um, but after this, it, it should be perfect. Um, so Pidcock was looking super strong. You might have seen from his European Championships data, which I analysed. Um, I'll try and leave a card. Um, you know, he was banging out six watts per kilo for half an hour or something stupid. Um, so yeah, he's in super, super good condition and his teammates just drilling himself. I think it could be Ben Healy, but I'm not 100% sure um, who it is. But he's riding for Trinity or just a, you know, an amateur team. Uh, there's a fair few Italian teams. You can see there it was 300 meters to the, uh, the GPM, um, which is sort of like the mountain points. Um, this team then goes on the front um, in order to, they've also got someone super higher up on GC as well. Um, and they're also trying to bring the brake back. The brake basically comes back about now. Uh, and this is now the head of the race. Um, we've got a technical descent, um, little climb, another technical descent, um, and then into the final mountain, uh, the mountain top finish, which is about a 12 minute effort, more or less. Uh, averages 7% for the first part, 9% for the second part uh, for, for, for the last like three, four minutes. Um, and Pidcock does a very good job. So over the top here, pretty good crowds to be fair for the under 23 Giro, which is what we love to see. This lad on the back is absolutely dying. Uh, and as is Italy, they have many, many hairpins and uh, people decide to get to the front. Uh, this bloke, uh, so, so Colioni is the bloke that um, this BIA team are working for. Um, he's in super good condition as well. Um, obviously, Pickox came second in the mountains jersey in the mountains classification. Uh, and this bloke here, he just decides to raz it. Um, we'll get his name up in a minute. I think it was, I think it was like, uh, he's Austrian lad. Um, but he's he's wearing a green jersey, so I assume that must be a points jersey or something. Uh, and maybe Pickox in a mountains jersey. Uh, but yeah, he just gets on the front and just starts razzing it. And um, everyone really struggles to get on. Um, and this actually helps Pickock a lot because obviously from his side cross background, he did have a big crash last year. Um, to be fair, in the, in the Tour de Lavenir, I think it was stage five, I think he crashed, maybe six. Um, but this lad just razzing corners. People can't keep up. He's a pretty big boy as well. You know, if you compare him to Pickock, he's looking very different. Uh, but yeah, he's trying to motivate this motorbike down the, down the climb. Uh, and everyone else is just stringing, stringing it out big time. You can see he's taking these corners pretty nicely, but he's also surging out of every single one. Uh, and this is obviously means the further back you are, um, the harder it is. Um, and you can see the guys at the back, the speed they're going through the corners is just, it's so different. And you can see Pickle, he's about fourth or fifth wheel in this, at this moment. There's his teammate uh, towards the back. Um, and this is that, and you can see Pickle starting to get to the front. Tom, Tobias Bayer is, is what his name is. Uh, right to the Tyrol Cycling Academy, I believe it is. Um, and Pickock is now in second wheel. He's moving up. He's like, right, I'm, you know, I know on the downhills, obviously he came second in Cyclocross World's Elite. Um, he's going to be able to put most people in difficulty and tire people out like Nibali. You don't necessarily have to create a gap on the downhill. Um, you, all you have to do is just make sure people are tired. Um, so we keep going ahead, 10.8 to go. Bayer's still just razzing it on the front, trying to get as much gap as possible. And we're going to see some very dodgy motorbike placements in a minute. I mean, even this is pretty, uh, is a bit of a joke because it means everyone else who's further back is really struggling to get back on. But this is why we love to watch a bit of cycling. The downhill attacks, you don't know when it's going to happen. Um, but Bayer is, is really loving these corners. Um, dry roads as well. Pickup did say in his Instagram that he was having a little bit of difficulties in the wet. Um, he gained second yesterday's stage. But he was saying some of the downhills didn't like, but still managed to come second. Uh, he probably should have won the sprint. The guy who won the sprint just looks super strong because he went from like 300 meters to go. And Pickock sort of, I don't know, he didn't hop on his wheel. But alas, uh, it's, he's like, I think, second overall coming into this stage. So, he's, you know, he's definitely going to hopefully get in the jersey. These are sort of small amount of stages. We've got bigger ones. I think the Mortarolos go in there. There's some big there's some big climbs uh, towards the end, which is which is good to see. And obviously, I assume Pickock's building up for Worlds, which got announced today, which is in Imola. Uh, the Oh no, there's no under 23 though, it's just senior, isn't it? So Pickock could still ride the senior to be fair, um, maybe. Um, it's 5,000 meters, the men's is 5,000 meters, 256K. Um, so 5,000 meters climbing and the women's is like sort of half half the distance, but still 3,500 meters climbing, so pretty pretty decent. We're going down 9.8K to Glow. Um, Bay is now catching his motorbike and this is, this is when he actually gets really sort of mugged off quite a lot. Um, and Pickock, they don't show you, but Pickock is just about behind. Um, and catches up with Bayer in a second, and he brings another lad with him. Um, 
who we never actually find out their name because they don't show us and um they don't really show us the numbers and they don't put his graphics on the screen either uh but i guess pickock is the only reason why you're on this video um so pickock now comes flying past um with a lad in tow um and he's looking super strong to be honest pickock at the moment like people are like, sort of like oh what's happened to him but he's won a lot of races um won under 23 cyclocross worlds he wants to win the road world championships which i guess won't happen this year and also wants him in mountain bike before he moves on to world tour i mean he like he could have gone world tour when he was like 18 like remco but he decided you know, what's the point um and he's now on the front just drilling it. and he knows that these guys are not gonna be able to hang with him um there's already you know three minutes like literally 30 seconds into the climb and this bayer lad who's huge is just struggling on the back but we've got more descent and pickock's like right uh this is the descent i'm gonna string it out and i'm just gonna ride you all off my wheel which is literally exactly what he does um so a bit more climbing uh and he's just like he has pretty high cadence as well he didn't release his power data i've got some power data to go through um afterwards so we'll, we'll go through that after the race highlights and just see what sort of numbers these guys are doing um it wasn't absolutely stratospheric um numbers to be honest uh but i guess you know still very strong but what i mean is that it wasn't just like wow he whacked seven watts for the last climb he did about 6.4 is my prediction for about 12 minutes um which is obviously still very good but he looks so young he looks he looks like a little boy compared to the rest of the people he's riding that's because he's still pretty small um i don't think he's over one meter 70 so he's not he's not large at all that's for sure um but he's got the numbers and for a time trialist he's sort of like one of those new breed trying time trialists like remco where you know they don't have massive watts like remco's not doing more watts than like stefan kung for instance but he's being in time trials just because he's aero as and that's the same with pickock in fourth and under 23 world tts and he's did 350 360 watts or something which is obviously decent but like the people are doing 440 or whatever um who are of beating him um or coming close to him but he looks very comfortable at the saddle he's just drilling it. he's still in the big ring these climbs are really really nice to be honest to ride on super smooth tarmac um you know out the saddle he always looks good but he, he just always keeps a high cadence off pickock he just like he never gets bogged down however and i think that's one of those things where a lot of riders these days who have grown up with a power meter with the cadence and not having like you know the 53 39 from a young age and like you know that's the standard gear people are more, a bit more ex experimental with the gears and he just definitely seems to like it so there's the first lad spat we zoom back to the chases and the chases just have absolutely no chance that they're um that they're going to get back to them there's Co there's Corioni, um number 247 i think it was uh there's sean quinn 31 america just signed for quick step that lad um so obviously a strong boy and pickock's just drilling it on this final climb and there's absolutely no no chance to come back the lad on his wheel is just He's just crying like he pick up this is like okay seven percent but he's going 22k an hour and he's just ridden up on his wheel like it's not he's not even like oh you know lobs in the attack he just literally rode by her and that red lad right off his wheel and that was pretty much cheerio um there's no one coming close to him he looks you know pretty comfortable and he's just sort of like well time to win put you all in the bin on the descents only two of you two of you could stay with me now on the climb and I'm going to put you in the bin on the climb as well. So alas, that is what he has done. Um, and he's just flying up the last bit, little bit of the climb. Colleoni is chasing behind him, but it's just not really going to happen, to be honest, to bring him back. Uh, and this is, you know, he might not have as much hype as Remco or some of the other people, but he's super strong. And by, coming into the final kilometers, um, he's just looking unstoppable. This is in the barrier section, and the man's coming to the line. And the time gap he put into everyone was pretty significant considering that they all had you know a draft they had um obviously maybe they had to do slightly more work on the downhill because i guess pickup came across so maybe they did equal work on the downhill but um yeah for sure pickup just put them in the bin up the climb uh four hours so not a super long race but still pretty pretty impressive um i don't know why the timings are different on the actual screen and on the on the board uh above the finish line but here's Colioni and he's like 20 seconds down but like you can see Pickcock shred that to pieces. There's no one within like minutes of uh, of him. So anyway, cheers. Uh, we'll go over to his power data now. Uh, well, not his, but Colioni's, and uh, see what sort of numbers these boys are doing. Stage four, Pickcock uh, beat Colioni by 22 seconds. Um, so we'll get into the analysis uh, right away. And Sean Quinn came forth, fourth was the lad I was talking about before. Uh, so Colleone is under 23, number four, second in the general. Uh, so 300 normalized for four hours is very solid, especially when you weigh 63 kilos. His FTP is 380, which if we do the math quickly, I don't need to do it, but it's about 6.3 watts per kilo. Um, so yeah, pretty solid numbers from the lad. 
Um, he's obviously, you know, will go well to almost without doubt, um, Colliani. But Pidcock also uploaded his ride, but he um, obviously doesn't seem to like to be to know what people what his power numbers are. Um, but you know, he uploads some of his numbers like the TT, but then nothing else. Here's a nice little picture of the lad. Um, but anyway, so we'll, we'll get into the analysis. So. Uh, the first hour was ridden at 50 kilometers an hour, which is pretty rapid, but only 260 normalized, so nothing major, to be honest. Like, not not super easy, but nothing absolutely bonkers. Heart rate was only 167 max. Then we basically go from 0 to 1,500 meters over 51 kilometers. Um, again, 300 normalized for an hour and 40. That's starting to get a bit high. You can see heart rate was 180. His max on the day was 191. So, you know, there, there are points here where it's like, 350 watts, 5.6 watts per kilo for aim. As that's like a pretty, pretty solid tempo, um, but but nothing crazy. That we'll, we'll leave that till the end. So this is the first climb where you know after this long, long climb, nice descent, and then he's you know, ridden at five, 5.1 watts per kilo, 25k an hour, five percent is nothing, nothing major. Then this is when Pickock's teammate really started to apply the pressure, and that's why you can see it's ridden at six watts per kilo for 10 minutes, um, which is you know, obviously. You know, four stages in with um, 3,000 kilojoules. That's when you're starting to get, you know, separate the men from the boys, quite literally. Um, and that's where I guess a lot of the, a lot of, there was a, a break up the road, which is when they brought them back. This is the descent um, where Pidcock really distanced everyone. So he rode that at 45.7 kilometers an hour. If we go over to Tom Pidcock's file, we'll be able to see um, this descent he rode at 46.4 kilometers an hour, which doesn't sound much, but he didn't form it. 33 he did it in five minutes 40 um if that's the same segment um no sorry 436 433 so only three seconds but still managed to get across um i assume potentially it was slightly further down when he made the made the difference um but if we look on this descent in general um we'll be able to see so yeah bio was 430 pick up th three seconds slower which which might not sound much but it's, it's enough to get a little gap and, you know, the gap of the bottom climb wasn't that much. It was only three seconds, but three seconds is quite easy if no one works and Pickock's going full at the bottom uh, to make a difference. So we look at the final climb, and as I said, it's about 10-minute climb at 7%. Um, the last part is slightly harder. It's about 9%, or um, well, there was a section of 9%. This is 8% still. Um, yeah, so this is 9%. Maybe it's a GPS error because I think that said it was 8% on his, but 390 watts. But if we go for, the, yeah, again, for the whole segment, uh, 22K an hour, 6 watts per kilo, um for 12 minutes it's, it's again it's not it's not stratospheric um but it's obviously pretty solid um pretty solid numbers still um and pidcock having put um 20 seconds into the final climb because they more or less get into the bottom within you know three five three to five five to three seconds sorry um then you know he's going to be doing 6.34 watts per kilo or so um if we look at the peak 20 minute power it's slightly higher than expected 5.4 watts per kilo um, which was sort of the downhill um, into the valley, which is then 370 normalized for the last 20 minutes of a race, which is over six watts per kilo, which is pretty solid. If we look at peak normalized here, this, I think these all came uh, towards the end of the race. Um, so you can see it wasn't, wasn't wasn't obviously a too hard race the whole time, just mainly hard at the end. Um, and there we go. There's the power number. So pretty solid from this lad, Colliani. Um, I expect good results from him. Stage five was... Um, was a sprint stage really, um, and good old Jake Stewart got third for the for GB. So he's looking solid. Laddie, you should go pro, I think, with um, FJ. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll go some. We'll analyze some more. I think stage seven has uh, got a mountain top finish up uh, Montes Bluga, uh, which is twenty eight k at six percent. So you know it doesn't sound much, but in under twenty three racing, they just need a hill and they've gone. And I think this is the stage with the Motorola, um, which again. The final climb is only 14.5k at 3%, but I expect Pidcock to launch here and do some stupid solo win uh, for the whole thing. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video, um, and I'll see you in the next one.